Good morning, folks. There were two minor eruptions of note on our star over the last day. The first was a surface surge center disk that put a tiny CME out into space, if anything. The second was a larger eruption of a filament on the northeastern limb, but that one will have no chance of coming in Earth's direction. Cosmic ray charts from Bartol appearing to show a continued rise, and the neutrons certainly do show that, but their muon charts actually clapped right back off yesterday, no readings since yesterday morning. Solar wind telemetry is calming as Earth encounters a new stream. The ambient change is causing minor perturbations. Meanwhile, flaring remained low for another day, and unfortunately the SDO site is down, so sunspot analysis is difficult. We're at ISWA to look at the return of the big sunspot group from October. We had a couple larger earthquakes yesterday, including a multiple 6 reader in Fiji, followed by one in Vanuatu that also hit 6.3 at its highest reading, and overnight a tremor struck the Kuril Islands that rang as high as 6.5. Per the usual, Downgrade City, USA has all 3 and 5 magnitude range. So we know that Rosetta's lander is on Comet 67P, but not all is well. Not only did the attachment harpoons fail, causing the lander to bounce when it hit the comet, but they believe the lander missed its target area, may have bounced down a cliff, is not getting all the sunlight it needs, might run out of power, is sitting on its side, and only 8 of the 10 instruments have sent back any data. It is somewhat stable to a point, and hopefully the data we can receive makes the project worthwhile. Updates to come as needed. Some great articles today starting with subtle hints of the solar system birth hidden in the magnetism of meteors, a phenomenal work by Arizona State. Also a look at galaxy life cycles aided by Hubble. A great piece on intergalactic wind, a previously unconfirmed energy discussed many times on Fly on the Wall, and a seismic hazard graphic to go with an article about seismic risks near Puget Sound. Then we come to this. Whether you can weather this weather or not depends on how warm you dress. First, imagine your monthly average snowfall is 4.8 inches, your record in a day is 4.7 and you just saw more than a foot of snow. Or how about temperatures plummeting to 45 degrees below average, well below zero in many places with records set across four states so far as a line of Arctic air as a pathway all the way south through the Gulf and past Mexico. Just take heed of what's around, check your local weather, take precautions, at least SoCal is going to get some rain in their forecast. Europe. I'm beginning to think these systems will just cycle through the exact same locations day after day. Our watch zones are along the eastern convergence of the Atlantic Low and the southeastern system. Down under, a convergence between nations will shift to New Zealand in a few hours while a strong convergence builds in southern Australia. No mysteries with our watch zones here. The Mobile Observatory Project is in Atlanta, freezing our toes off for two days. Private event at Trinity today, and our public event tomorrow at Whole Foods. Come see us, chat some science. The location, time, and all details can be found at observatoryproject.com, which is also linked for you right below this video. Got some shots of our star to close. It's 5.55 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.